Hallelujah. We are excited to be here and just to share God's word among, amongst God's people. Um, we, we, we have two uh, other young people in our family. They were in the first service um, and they have, they have left for the other meetings. Uh, Joan and Jeff, and uh, our world is full. Having said that, um, I, I want to thank God for this far that he has brought us. And just uh, seeing the goodness of the Lord, some of us uh, we haven't met uh, for some time. Um, and it is only good to come and say hi. Amen. 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 Having said that, um, I, I, in the first service, I, I told people that we came, we came to DCIKZ uh, just a couple of years ago. Um, Vijana Warikayangu ni Akina Sangura, Peter Morage, those are, those are the youths. Um, that was like 32 years ago. Sisi ndio tulikuwa, eh? Kutuna tes, tuna tes. Nimekutana na Sangura na niyambia alivaa kiatu, akavaa viatu hazifanani. Na ninaona ni sawa tu kwa sababu, you know, when you get, <laughs> when you get here, you don't care a lot. Mwambia, <laughs> enough times I have found myself, nimevaa socks, na niniona zinafanana. But I realize they are not the same when I get into a place. <laughs> but you know, people think ni swag, wanafikiria, we, sama, watu wa siku hizi, hata waze wa siku hizi. So that just tells you we've been here for some time and seen what God is doing. And we appreciate uh, the gift that we have in the house and our bishop because of his leadership. I want us to get into God's word. And the word that uh, we'll be sharing is on giving. Amen. Tell your neighbor giving. giving. Yes, uh, we'll be looking at giving. And I want to make a couple of disclaimers here because it's important. I know when we talk about giving and some of us, our minds will go back to, we just talked about giving not long ago, I think last month, but one. Um, is it that we, have, we, are, we are lacking material or what is it? No, we are not lacking material. We are, we are talking about giving because it's important. It matters to God. Tell your neighbor it matters to God. Yes. When you're thinking about we as the agents uh, of change that God is working with in the world today, and the agents of change, I want to mean the church, that is the church of Jesus Christ, that God has designed and desired that he will work with us, through us, now for this season, to do what he has purposed to do in the world. It is very possible for God to do what he wants to do without us. But we have been privileged that he has picked each one of us who have believed in him and have said yes to the call to be the agents of change that he is working with. And so because of that, it is important for us to step in that place, to step in that space and know what God desires of us. I also am aware that this work that God has called us to do, I'm saying this work here and beyond, requires finances. It requires money. It requires your giving. I, I, I told the first service that there was this pastor who was hired to um, a congregation. They needed a pastor, and so they hired this pastor. And for the first, like, six Sundays, he spoke about the same thing. Until the elders of... <laughs> elders of the church sat and they asked, Pastor, we thought when we interviewed you, you looked sharp and like you were knowing what is going to happen. And like you were you know, on, on, on top of things. We have just had the same sermon over and over. And the pastor was like, yes, I know. But he said this, until I see the application, I will preach on it again. I'm not saying that's why we are preaching on giving. But... <laughs> Uh, but it's important for us to hear, and, uh, and, and they also say that repetition helps us in learning and also in retention of what we hear. Amen? And so, um, on that premise then, we want to hear God's word, and like I said, we'll be talking about giving, and, and I know when we talk about giving, we are excited about giving. Say, there are those of us who, who know that we give our time, and that's good. We give our talents. We give our whatever else. We give our space. We give ourselves to coming for the services. But I want to zero in on finances. Tell your neighbor finances. finances. <laughs> so that you don't get uncomfortable. We're getting into your wallet. Hello? Ah. 
We have no problem with talents. But every time we come to giving our money, we feel like, mm -mm, I have a say when it comes to my money. It's true, you have a say. But that's what we are talking about. So look at your neighbor if they are uncomfortable, tell them, relax. We're talking about finances. We're talking about, and finances is huge. We're talking about money, your giving, your tithes and offerings and other givings, the gifts that you bring into the house of the Lord because it's important and it matters to God. I know uh, in scripture we have several occasions where we see giving happening and uh, we, we, we may not have time to enumerate all those instances when people gave. And it was recorded in scripture. There was a woman who gave two mites. And it was recorded. There was, there, was, uh, there was this guy who gave his tomb. He was called who? Joseph of Arimathea. Unajua watu ambao wanajua kujipanga? Sini Joseph. You are alive, but you have created your tomb. It is somewhere. You're waiting for a time to die, and then you'll be buried in that tomb. He gave it to Jesus when Jesus died. I'm sure he must have been thinking now, where do I now um, yeah, do another tomb? He realized he, Jesus didn't need it for long because he was going to resurrect. So he got back his tomb, hopefully. <laughs> and we have, we have many people. We have Dorcas a woman who was in the Bible and it's recorded of the good works that he did. He gave of, she gave of her talent and of her, her, uh, her, her, her monies or her finances. She used to make clothes, sweaters. And when she died, people cried a lot. I don't know whether people are going to cry when we die. <laughs> Say, or they'll be saying good riddance. Hmm? You occupy space for nothing. So we're talking about giving of your substances and we are doing this because, like I've said, it's important. The Bible, the Word of God, that is our compass, that is what invites us into the life that we do and how we need to do it, talks about giving. It actually admonishes us to give. And we're just going to cite a few examples of how, where the Bible admonishes us to give, and then we'll look at the benefits, hopefully, of, of giving, and then we'll be done. Now, when you talk about admonishing, when, you, when, when, you, when you're talking about the Bible admonishing you and me to give, the idea we have here is of, you know, placing an idea in your mind. The Bible encourages you to think about giving. The Bible encourages me to think about giving. It admonishes you. It counsels you, if you want, in other words, to give. It, it directs you. It instructs you to give. Now, when, when an idea is lodged in your mind, I want to tell you for a fact that you will think about it, you will consider, you will analyze, and hopefully you might want to do what you're informed by that idea. And so when the scriptures admonish, it simply says that it lifts that commitment in scripture, places in your mind so that you keep thinking about it because it's important. So we'll look at five admonitions on giving in scripture and then we will be done. The first one that we all know comes from the book of Malachi, and Malachi is uh, chapter number 3 and verse number 10. And I know we've talked about this over and over. Scriptures admonish us, encourage us. Actually, it is like we are being, it prefers that we do it. In the book of Malachi, chapter number 3 and verse number 10, this is what scripture says. If you give it, uh, give it to us in NIV, it says, verse number 10, Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10, that is 12. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. It says in verse number 11, I'll, pre I'll, I'll prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not cast their fruit says the Lord Almighty, says in verse number 12, then all the nations will call you blessed. For yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. This is what scripture says. It says bring the tithe into the storehouse. It doesn't suggest. 
And you know, when we're looking at paying your tithe, there are a lot of other things that we pay for, isn't it? We pay for bills. When you're paying bills, do you say, I'm giving for the bill? So my, I, th I think I want to give for my power bills. When you're paying your income tax, do you give for your income tax? Do you, do you give for your hospital bill? <laughs> but when we come to paying the tithe, we start negotiating. Every time we get to paying, because it's a requirement, scripture says, pay, pay your tithe. But every time we get there, we don't, we don't negotiate about income tax, we don't negotiate about when you get into the matatu. You pay what is required, isn't it? When you go into a hotel, you pay. <laughs> you, you don't start discussing. You pay. <laughs> Scripture admonishes us, encourages us, cancels us. It says like, I cancel you. I advise you, pay your tithe. Hello? I know I will not hear a lot of amens, but I will say it anyway. <laughs> it says, pay your tithe. And, and, and even before I leave there, let me ask this. Because, you know, many times we argue about tithes. And we argue for those that have gone to school. Is tithe of the Old Testament or of the New Testament? Then you post like, yeah, Nijibu. I, I don't know what your take would be. But even before we had the law, we see Abraham giving a tithe to Melchizedek, king of Salem. And the person who gave a tithe, scripture would later come and say he is the father of faith. And so I want to suggest that giving of our tithe or paying our tithe is a faith thing, not a law thing. Now, faith is for the believers. And faith, without it, scripture tells us it's impossible to please God. And so I know you'll have a problem paying your tithe if you have no faith. In other words, you're saying, when we come into those arguments, and, and you know we stretch it even further, is it gross or net? But you know this one gave to this one. We are giving to church. You know all those discussions? I'm sorry to say they're about faith. It's not even about money. It's about faith. Faith. Tell your neighbor, faith. faith. Yes, it's about faith. Let me even bring it this way. The Old Testament. Do you know the God of the Old Testament? He is the God of the New Testament. Jehovah Ra. Jehovah G. Jehovah Sidke. Jehovah Elsha. Jehovah Elo. And those are the Jehovah's. These names were given to God by the people of old. Because he appeared to them in all these ways. I, I don't know why we still use Jehovah Nisi today. Yet it is of the Old Testament. So why would we have double speak that we want Jehovah Rapha who fights? We want Jehovah Jireh who provides. We want Je But when we come to Jehovah who demands that we give our tithe, then we have a discussion. Ah, tell your neighbor, have faith. Tell your neighbor, it's of faith. And scripture admonishes us to pay our tithes. The second admonition that we get from scripture is that we will not just pay our tithes, but scripture presupposes that we are able to pay our tithes and give offerings. Scripture suggests that we, you and I, we are capable, we can afford to pay our tithes and give our offerings. Let me, let me tell you why we don't give. 
Now, what kind of a speaker says why we don't give? I should be looking for reasons why we should give, isn't it? But let me just tell you why we don't give. We don't give because some of us, and especially the young people who are here, they say they have no money. It's a lie. Young people say it's the parents who have money. It's the old people who have money. <laughs> the truth is, all of us have money. So we don't give because we think we don't have it. I want to suggest to us that we have. Because we haven't talked even about the amount. We're not talking about the amount that we need to give. We just say we need to give. None of us is without nothing. If that is correct English. All of us have something. <laughs> you know, every time I come into giving and talking about giving, I remember a song that we used to sing. I don't know whether you came from that place. Neke we nakyo. Dire de nakyo. Itrahei. Kumbe munajua. All that we have, we were given. There is nothing that we have that was not given to us. And if we would take up, up after our, our, our father of faith, Abraham, he was blessed. Scripture would record that he was blessed to become a blessing. So we, we don't give because we think we don't have. The truth is, none of us would say that we don't have. Each of us has something that God has given to us. We don't give because we worry. We worry about what we shall wear, what we shall eat, what we shall pay rent with, what we shall do this, investments and all that kind of a thing. I want to suggest we don't give because we are comfortable where we are. And so we think about the few coins that God has given us. Let me tell you this, that people who are fighting for their lives, money does not make sense. Ah. If you're in a situation that is life and death. You don't think about money. Even your people don't think about money. You go to hospital and the doctor says we need three million. You are like, we will get it. Lakini wewe ni yule ambaye kutoa fungu. But now millions don't, you, you're not shaken. Why? It's because we are comfortable. So we, we don't give because we are comfortable. We are in a comfort zone. We want to make sure that there is this for tomorrow and there is this for next year and there is this trip we are planning for. And all those things are good. I'm not saying that we don't do them. But those are some of the reasons as to why. Because we worry about life. We worry about what we shall wear, what we shall eat, where we will get where and what. Those are the things that cause us not to give. We don't give because sometimes and I would, I, would, I would challenge everybody who's, who thinks this way. We don't know where our money goes. Have you had people who say, Mi hata siji pesa ilienda wapi? Pesa yao inakuanga na migu. The people who don't give. I said, I know I will not have amens, but I will say it anyway. You know, you know when you're talking and you're saying, Mi misijui pesa ilienda wapi? The truth is, you know, but your priorities were wrong. And you need to know where your money goes. Ah, you need to know. You know, growing up, I, I had a very wonderful father. Among other things that he needed to know is that you would take account of your life in the course of the day. Now, growing up, we, we went to school when part of our hobbies was fighting. We, we didn't have slides those days, so we had a lot of time to do a lot of fighting. You know, nowadays, kids in school, they have slides, they ski, they skate. Kunata skating squeeze. Parents are told, you need to buy skating shoes. <laughs> During our time, we were preoccupied with, yeah, who is the alpha? So we would fight a lot. Sometimes we'd fight twice in a day. <laughs> Can you imagine Vita? Pigana <laughs> Vita. Until, until we coined, uh, I think after people have grown old. Barat Yoshoro. Nashinda Apo Gipigana. So, what would happen is you went about your life in the course of the day and you fought with this boy or whoever else 
even girls, even girls of our days were tough. They used to beat boys, especially from Nyeri. <laughs> so you would go home, you would go home, and then because of your engagement <laughs> along the way, either you had a cut somewhere or you were swollen somewhere, and, and, and then your, your, your father asked, what happened to you? <laughs> no, Peter is laughing because he knows some of those things. Then you're asking, what happened where? Then he tells you, you don't know that you have, a, there's something, you, you, are, you, are swole, you have a cut, and you're like, oh. <laughs> because you know, that was part of life. And then you would recount, you're thinking, where might this have happened? Is it the first one or the second one? If you didn't know, that would warrant a beating. In other words, he was saying, you need to know what happens in your life. Please believe us, when you say you don't know where your money goes, Ah, what you're telling God to do is to discipline you. You need to know where your money goes. One of the ways to know where your money goes today, look at your impressor. And you will know where your money goes. In the book of Luke, chapter number 12, verse 22 to um, 34, and this, this is a sermon that Jesus preaches, um, Almost equivalent to the Sermon on the Mount. You know the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes in, in Matthew chapter 5, 6, um, and, and thereabouts. And part of what Jesus says um, in, in Luke um, chapter number 12, verse 22 to 34, and we'll just pick a few things from there, so that you and I need to get to a place to know that Scripture admonishes us not just to give to pay our tithes, but also give our offerings, because we are capable of doing that. We can afford to do that. It says in verse number 22, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. And I know I'm talking to people who worry about life, and especially the ages that are here. We worry about life. We worry about our kids, isn't it? We worry about when am I going to do this and the other. Like I'm also thinking, when am I going to build? <laughs> you know, we worry. We worry about life. And you might at some point want to think, well, this worry is legitimate. It is valid. If you worry about life, and if you read this portion of scripture, towards the end, it says that people who worry about these things, and they are enumerated there, scripture says they are pagans. Pagans are people who don't believe in God. So it says in verse number 23, um, life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or burn, yet God feeds them. And he continues on and on, and I, I want to I encourage you to read up to verse number 34 so that we are saving on time. So we worry, we worry about life, we worry for, for, for what we're going to eat, and scripture is encouraging us that uh, life is more than food. We, we, we need not to worry about these things. It says, look at the birds of the air, they do not sow or reap. It says, look at how they are clothed by God. It continues to say, the flowers in the field, they do, not, they do not do all the things that we do. They do not spin, they do not, yet it compares that with Solomon, that Solomon himself in his highest of splendor was not like any one of those flowers, one of those lilies. It is God who clothes them. It is God. There is no amount of care that will cause you to add a cubit to your life. So you might as well stop wasting your, your worry. So do not be afraid, it says, verse number 32. It says, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom, not just the things that you would want to be worried about, not just about your kids and where they're going to go to school, what they're going to wear, God wants to give you the kingdom. God wants to give you much more than that. God wants you to be involved in his affairs. And so he says, verse 33 says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. As you do that, this scripture says, provide passes for yourselves that you will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. 
that's the encouragement that we're getting. That we, we, will, we will put our, our treasures in the kingdom of God. We will not worry about these things. We will put our treasures in the kingdom. We treasure many things, God's people. We treasure many things. Seated in this place, we treasure many things. If God would allow us for a moment to look into our minds and what we treasure, or in our hearts, there are some of us who treasure pleasure. Yeah, ni wewe pleasure. Mahali kuna, yes, hapo ndiyo uko. Unasikia musuri. Pesa yako yota ni kutumia kwa musuri. You do all sorts of things for pleasure. So you treasure that pleasure. And so that is where your heart is. We treasure property, some of us. People who come from some, some, some community that I'm not going to mention. They, all their life, they are buying land. Land. So how much land do you need for yourself and for your children? And your entire life is, ni natafuta kabloti. Ukimaliza hiyo natafuta ingine. Your life is plot after plot after. Then what? So their treasure is in property. And it is good to have property, by the way. Aye, it is good. Mutu ambaya kwa naka property mahali ya nasikianga vizuri. But let not your treasure be in property. Let your treasure be in God. That will make all the difference. Some of our treasure is, for some of us, is sports. Kuna watu wako hapa, sahi tunanunua. Hmm? Tunanunua mchezaji. Huyu, kwa sababu season, eh, tu, ili tufanya hivi, you are here. Ah, what was sports? You treasure sports so that you even have an account here betting. And you're in charge. You're looking at me with your two eyes. Wewe ni mtu wakuekeza. Wewe ni wakubet. You even bet in some leagues that are not even important. Ligia Croatia, Sijui ya Israel, Ligia wa Afghanistan. Ah, please. That is where your treasure is. I propose to us we need to treasure God's kingdom. And when we do that, we will not have a problem with giving. Because scripture says that if we treasure the kingdom, then we will put everything in that space that is safe where moths and thieves cannot get. And as we do that, it says we are opening a pass for ourselves. And so none of us seated here cannot afford to pay their tithes and give their offerings. Admonition number three. We are admonished on how to give. Not just giving our tithes, not just giving tithes and offerings. Scripture admonishes us on how to give. And in the book of Luke, chapter number six, verse number 38, it says, give and it will be given to you. It says, give a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and says running over this will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it shall be measured to you you know when scripture says that we have no we have no space to argue the measure you give it shall be given to you so scripture admonishes us on how how do we need to give? We need to give and give a good measure because that will be given to us. Realize I'm not saying a shilling for a shilling. I'm not, I'm not saying a dollar for a dollar because I, I suppose there are people who are dealing with dollars and other foreign currencies. We are not saying one Kenya shilling you give to God, you're going to get to a hundred. I am not saying that. I'm saying give a good measure and it will come back to you. That is scripture. Admonition number four. Scripture admonishes us, encourages us. It tells us what kind of a, a givers we ought to be. Not just the how we need to give, but what kind of a giver you and I need to be. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 6 to 7, this is what scripture says. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. We've just heard that. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart. 
Give what you have decided in your hearts. You the giver. Don't give because somebody said this prayer costs 1,000. And this kind of a prayer that will give what you have decided to give. You are not giving under compulsion. You are giving because you have decided to give. And it says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, those are the kind of givers that God is calling us to be. What kind of givers does scripture admonish us to be? It admonishes us to be cheerful givers. Not tearful givers. Not grudgingly. but cheerful givers. People who rejoice, knowing that this is a worship to the Lord, just like you had energy and strength dancing before the Lord as a way of worship, you also come excited as you're giving to God's work. Be a cheerful giver. Tell your neighbor, be a cheerful giver. Don't give and then go to complain to your wife, telling your wife, you know God demanded that I give this, so we have no food. Uh -uh. You're not going to give and then you're telling your kids you're not going to school because God requires you to do that. That is your duty. You will not give and then go complaining. You can miss any pesa too. If you're that kind of a giver, please don't give. Give cheerfully. Because you know, the person who gets pleased is not even the pastor. It's not even the bishop. It is God. And he is the one who in turn, uh, who in turn blesses uh, you. So give and give cheerfully. Admonition number five, as uh, our time is, 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 is going on well. We are admonished on when to give. So not just about how and what, it is even on when to give. In the book of 1 Corinthians, again, uh, chapter number 16 and verse number 1, I want to read uh, through to verse number 4. It says this in the NIV. Now about the collection of God's people, and this is Paul talking to um, the church in Corinth, says, now about the collection of God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches. So it's something that he had said in, in Galatia. Now he comes into Corinth and says the same, or he teaches about the same as uh, uh, pertains giving. It says on the first day of every week, on the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. In other words, he's telling us that we don't just come without a plan. In the course of the week, God has blessed us. And he says, the first day of the week, set aside what you need to give. We will not encourage that when the people of God come into the house of God, then we whip emotions so that people can give. No, no, no. We want to encourage you. Do it scripturally. Do what scripture says. Set aside as you're coming. Don't just come and give because it's giving time and you realize, wow, oh, it's giving time. Then you dip your hands in the pocket and whatever comes is what you're going to give. Give what you have decided. Give, set aside as you come what you need to give. And so God is, through scripture, calling us to be people who plan. We are not just giving without a plan. We have a plan. We have set aside. We're not just giving because this and that was said. We are giving because it is part of our lives. We have learned to set aside every first day of the week. Now, let me run very fast into the benefits that come with giving to God's work, and then we'll be praying and bringing this to a close. Looking at all those admonitions, and there are many others that we didn't uh, talk about in Scripture, but just the five of them, we talked about paying the tithes, tithes and offerings, with the how and the who of the person and the when uh, of giving. The benefits that come with this, number one, God's blessing equip us to give to others. When we give, the blessings that we get, God equips us to give to others. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9 and verse 8, 
And these are just references that you can go and uh, read. God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So it becomes a benefit for you as a giver. You become equipped to give to others. Benefit number two, the act and the attitude of giving is more important than the amount. When it becomes part of our lives, the act and the attitude that goes with it is more important than the amount. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. Can you imagine? For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability. Entirely on their own. It became part of their lives. It was uh, with uh, the, the attitude of giving that they had. Um, they gave not because of what they had, but they gave because God had blessed them. They went beyond their generosity or their ability if you do want. Benefit number three. And we say this again from Second Corinthians chapter number nine, verse seven. We we're talking about you give what you have decided to give. You don't give reluctantly or under compassion. He says, for God loves a cheerful giver. The benefit that comes with that or the need that we know or why we, we need to give is because it matters to God. And what matters to God then needs to matter to us. So giving matters to God and gives you a right attitude. When we give, it gives you a right attitude. I know it gives you a right attitude. It gives you a right perspective towards life. It helps you to look at things God's way. And so if it matters to God, then it needs to matter to us. Benefit number four, a giving habit makes us a better people. A giving habit makes us a better people. In the book of Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 35, he says, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of uh, the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So giving, when it's a habit, it makes you and I a better person. Benefit number five, it is not just going to make you a better person, but it becomes an ongoing activity. It becomes part of your life. There are people who are excited when they have an opportunity to give, while some of us want to run away when there is, it's time for giving. Benefit that comes with it is that it, it, it becomes an ongoing thing. It becomes part of your life. It becomes a habit in your life. Second Corinthians again, chapter 8, uh, verse 10 to 11. And here is my judgment. And, and you first think that God would talk about judgment and in the same portion, talk about giving. He says, and here is my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year, you are the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. It says, num verse number 11, Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. God will talk about judgment in the same portion of scripture when he's talking about giving. That there is an eagerness, a willingness to do that good thing. To give even to the completion of whatever it is according to the means that God has given you. So it becomes an ongoing activity. It becomes your habit and you are known by your habits. Another reference would be from the book of Galatians, chapter number 6, verse number 9 through to 10. It says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the household of faith or the family of believers. God has given us an opportunity to be a blessing to the house of God. 
to the household of believers, the household of faith. The early church is known to have been a church that gave. One of the characteristics of the early church is that they gave, and scripture records, that amongst them, no one had need. I know we're living in times when people are so capitalistic. You're, you're, you're so self-centered. You don't mind about your neighbor. But that is the Kenya today. It is not the church that God wants us to be. The example of the church that God wants us to be is in scriptures, in the book of Acts, that people bore each other's burden. They gave until there was no one who was in need. Today, when it comes to giving, and not just giving in church and for the kingdom, giving even in the group where you belong, where people are coming to serve you. Some of us have a problem. I ask the treasurers who are here. Una sukumwa utoe mia moja. Yule mulikubaliano. Na weme ni mutu anamini. We have talked about the people who do not, they are worried about those things. They don't give. It's, the problem is a faith thing. It's a faith problem. It's because they are pagans. They are worried about this, worried about that. And it's because where you are, you are comfortable. People who are in discomfort, don't worry about those things. My prayer for us is that we would rise up and wake up to the opportunity that God has given us. You know, we will be remembered for the good things that we have done. Part of the good things we'll be giving. I want to suggest to us, anybody that you have helped along the way, and you didn't help because you had money, you helped because you moved to meet the need, like the early church did, they will never forget. You might forget that you did that, but they will never forget. Because that's a work of God. It is of faith. You are, you are answering to the work of faith. And that's what we've been called to do. Give us, and this I didn't say, they have a certain joy that comes with giving. That the people who hold and hold back will not ever, ever enjoy. Because what you want to save gets lost, including our lives. What we are not able to save, we give it so that we cannot lose it. That is scripture. Scripture happens to be looking at things right side up or in auto reverse. You will not get poor by giving. I suggest you'll be poor if you don't give. It says the way up is to go down. Esteem others more than yourself. But if you seek to be esteemed, you will sit in the front seats and when the MC comes, he'll push you behind. The kingdom principles work out of reverse. I pray and hope that we will continue to give and have the joy of giving even as we support God's work. Know that this work that we have gotten into will go to places that you and I wouldn't have gone. I know the people in the first service that discipling somebody is very, very expensive. And there are many, many people who need to be discipled. When they are discipled, then this nation becomes a different nation. But if we have so many people who are not discipled, in other words, they are not disciplined, then we'll have a lot of problems. And so we need to give. We need to give not just because of the utilities, but we need to give to the work of God. And giving will cause us to have a greater impact. Given a choice to belong to a church that has money and one that does not have, and both of them are full of believers, I will choose the one that has money. I don't know about you. But God's money is with, people, with God's people. So I want to pray for us. And pray that because of this sharing of God's word, that you will step up your commitment. That you will decide to be a kingdom financier. That you will say, with, in my time, I was counted as one who gave to God's kingdom. And God has blessed us differently. To whom much is given, much will be required. And you cannot outgive God.
You cannot outgive God. Every time we give, God sees. He notices. And he sees somebody who is trying him. The only place that God invites mortal men to try him is when it comes to giving. You search scripture. God says, test me in this. Try me in this. It is only when it comes to giving. Allow me to say a prayer for us. And as we do this, we have said giving is of faith. Giving is not because of the law. It is of faith. And the first place that we need to start to give is to give ourselves to the Lord. Because on our own, we are not able to do anything. If you have not acknowledged the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, this giving that we are talking about here will be so hard for you. He said it's for believers, it's for people who walk in faith. Now our faith needs to first and foremost take us to the Lord Jesus. The one who died for us, the one who was the sufficient sacrifice for you and me, that we who are sinners, when nobody would have loved us, Jesus Christ loved us and gave his life for us. Even if the entire world would have been given, it was not sufficient to save one person. But God gave us the most expensive, the most costly gift that was enough to save us. And that was Jesus Christ, his only son. So are you here, you have not given your life to Jesus? You're sitting pretty and you're thinking, oh, this thing of giving, giving. I'm saying we start by giving our lives to the Lord. You are here, you have not given your life to Jesus. This will just be sounding like gibberish. It will just be Greek for you. I want to invite you to come to the Lord. The one who has given his life for you. Who loved us before we loved him. Loved us when we had no form or shape. When we didn't know a lot of things. And he has allowed us to be coerced. In God's kingdom. So if you lift up your hand. Saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. We will pray together, and from this day on, you get into the sheepfold, into the flock of God, and we trust God for what he wants with our lives. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? We do not have a lot of time. You say today, if they give an opportunity to go to church, when we go to church for somebody who wants to give their life to Jesus, I'll be there. Do not allow the enemy to convince you Otherwise, the Lord wants you. The Lord wants to save you. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus? I want us to say this prayer, and we are going to say all of us, so that if there be um, one of us seated there and you're afraid of standing up, and if you make this prayer for the very first time in your life, then you know you have been welcomed into God's kingdom. You want to say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you. I know I'm a sinner who needs to be forgiven. I give my life to you. From this day onwards, I will call you Father. You will call me Son. I ask you to write my name in the book of life. And from this day, I am born again. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for each one of us that made that prayer, and especially those that did it for the very first time in their lives. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that our sharing today will make sense only when they have given themselves to you. I want to pray that our Father and our Lord, even as we go into the week, because we know that we have a God who has purpose to bless us, and the blessings of God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow, blesses us to become a blessing to somebody out there that this shall be our portion this week in the name of the Lord. I want to thank you and to honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.